A town in Delaware, got to talk about this, is considering giving more than 200 businesses the right to vote. And this is causing concern uh, that corporate interests could sway local elections. Seaford, uh, around 85 miles south of Wilmington, recently changed its charter, allowing each business in the town one vote in local elections. Now it's up to the state legislature to give the final okay. So let's bring in Princeton University Politics and Public Affairs Associate Research Scholar, Lauren Wright. Uh, Lauren, always good to see you. Uh, lots of questions here. There are 234 businesses in Seaford, population 7,000, and only 340 people turned out to the most recent election there. So this has the potential to significantly impact local politics. Um, explain what elections, uh, first off, locals will be able to vote in. So it is only these local type races, referendums, actually in Seaford on tax legislation. Businesses can already exercise their right to vote, and this is happening in towns across Delaware. It becomes controversial, sometimes gets rolled back. I tend to think this will not go into effect because, as you mentioned, Marky, it does have to pass the state legislature, and in both chambers there, Democrats uh, outnumber Republicans mm -hmm. by a two-to-one margin. And now that News Nation's covering this and The Hill um, and CBS News, my guess is people will be sort of outraged by it because it goes against this principle of one person, one vote yeah. that we hold dear in this country. Tree. Well, you bring up my next point. When I was reading this story yesterday, I think our brains first go to double dipping. You know, if you're a right. if you're a store owner and you live in town, do you essentially vote twice? I mean, what are the rules here? So the proponents of this measure would say no. They're checking voter rolls so that if you're a business owner in Seaford and a resident in Seaford, you don't vote twice. But you're right. You know, if you look in general, if you live outside the town, which many of these people do, uh, and you have a business registered in Seaford, then yes, at large, in general, your vote uh, is counting twice in some way, shape, or form. And, and But who decides how the business votes? Is it the CEO? And and who's tracking, <laughs> right. who's tracking whether, you know, the CEO's vote uh, was on this ballot and he also voted, you know, at home uh, on a personal... Who's tracking this? I don't understand. I mean, I th right, I was trying to look into this, and it seems that the owner of the business, and a lot of these are LLCs, where the business is just one person or two people. Mm -hmm. And so it is really hard to tell. I think those are valid questions that is really why this is newsworthy. A lot of people are scratching their heads, and it strikes them on its face as unfair. And it... This isn't a completely new idea. Some towns have given corporations the right to vote in elections. How's it worked mm -hmm. out for them and any negative side effects or, or loopholes there? I mean, it's been controversial in uh, Rehoboth Beach, where the Biden family has a has, has a vacation home, for instance. This has been the case, but it's gone back and forth. And so the, you know, residents get angry because essentially um, it's a very common case in Delaware where almost two million businesses are registered, mm -hmm. including two thirds of the S&P 500, where property owners, business owners seem to have rights that outweigh the yeah. electoral power of their neighbors. And, and, and Lauren, you, know, you, you mentioned anger yeah. quickly, just about 30 seconds sure. left. There are some people in favor of it, though. So what are what are the benefits yeah. that you see here? Well, the mayor is the one who cast the deciding vote at the city council level. But I think we've seen some responses from Republicans in the state legislature that are lukewarm. I think they know this is a lightning rod. And this has been an issue, again, you know, since the apportionment cases in the 1960s in the Supreme Court led by Earl Warren, where we decided legislative districts for this exact reason have to be roughly the same size. So some people's votes don't count more than others. So it's an American ideal. I think it will be controversial and may not come to pass. Yeah. Marky. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.